Kevin Alistair is still fighting. Kevin has very good MMA defense. I'll give him that. Alistair gets thrown off the stage into uh, Dabakato. He hits the ring. He kills both guys. Yep. That's how Raw Underground ends. So he's got to be debuting on the main roster after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and 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 uh, Kevin got a promo on him um, on the on Raw Talk. So it looks like he's going to be coming with Kevin. Um, so I guess they're going to do something with the guy. Because um, he'll probably, I'm going to guess he's going to go in there and beat Kevin. I mean, he's, he's a big guy. He'll he's get a, a good athlete. three weeks here. Yeah, he's a good athlete. Um, I was never impressed with him in NXT, but, you know, he's he's like a real 6'9", 360. Um, you know, was in an NFL camp with the, the Vikings. And... Um, you know, agile. He's really agile for a guy that size. He was on. I remember because I saw him in the um, what was the thing called? They had like this the um, you know those those the thing in NXT where they had everybody do like you know like what you would do like football agility drills, and you know you're kind of doing it's kind of an obstacle course type of thing, not exactly, and you got all these guys there, and. Um, um, like so, Riddick Moss and Dan Maitha, who's not there anymore, who's like six foot seven bodybuilder, who is really agile and also a pretty decent promo. And it's like I guess his work must have. Well, you know, I know his work wasn't good, you know, but but it still amazed me that they cut him, you know, because it's just, you know, whatever. And then he was talking about how he really wanted to do something in wrestling, and I guess we have a pandemic, so I guess it's tougher. But he hasn't done anything. It's like I always think that like these guys when they get cut, you know, just go out there and do indies, and um, you know, and some guys do, and then some guys don't. So, I, but the ones who, I'm not giving up on this thing, and then you never see him again. Dude, I got it's a like, question for you since you've given this rant many times. Yes, Fred Rosser. Yep. Darren Young. Yep. Has he done anything in the last three years until this Friday on New Japan? He did some um, some some indie stuff, but not a lot. Dude, not, not that not that much. This guy. Looked so good. Did you see his match? On New Japan? Yeah, he did look good. He Holy look smokes. Good. Yeah, he looked good. Yeah. I was really surprised. Because yeah, but he's, 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 he, was, he was in there with good people, though, too. He was in there with good people, but he looked really good in that match. He looked and like he could wrestle, yes. Yeah, for a guy that, I mean, they barely did anything with him ever, and then he, like, dropped off the face of the earth, pretty much, after, after they cut him. It's like, boy, they dropped the ball on this dude. Of course, they dropped the ball on almost everybody, but he looked really good. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, so Baba Tunde is really, like, for his size, he's amazingly agile. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be a good pro wrestler. And what I've seen of him as a pro wrestler, you know, I mean, he never did anything in NXT at all. Um, but, you know, yeah, I got a feeling he's going to be three weeks. We should they should they should do like a a movie about WWE. They should call Retribution three weeks. Just call them name the movie three weeks and have everyone who comes in from NXT and and you know they come in and they get that big win in week one and then three weeks later and they go like, eight minutes with Dolph Ziggler week two and then <laughs> week three ah the sky. But with Keith, what's so amazing with Keith is is it's just like it's like. Almost like everything that you could do wrong with him, they're doing because yes, it's like that's what they do. That's frustrating. It's like it's like I know like there's the mentality of okay, he's a big guy and we don't want him doing a lot of stuff because of his you know might hurt his knees and this and that. But you can like do like a little bit. You know what I mean? You know it's like you don't have to do like what he did on the indies. But that is sort of how he got over. And even in NXT when they toned him down from doing like say fifteen flying spots and maybe gave him three at least with the three like it's like okay it's not as good you know and I'm, I'm not saying more is better i'm just saying i watched him on indies all the time and and i saw him in some amazing indie matches um there was one which i wasn't even at live but like uh i was at, i was down for a pwg show and i must have missed a show and i came back and these guys just basically were like you have got to watch this match it was him and riddle and this match was freaking incredible. Um, 
for both guys. I mean, this was this was like every bit as good as the Suzuki and Shingo, Shingo Takagi match from a couple weeks ago. That's how good it was. And, you know, now I'm watching these two guys in WWE, and I don't know what to say. But, but Keith, you know, it's like Keith's working with Randy Orton, you know, the guy we're told is like one of the greatest workers in the business. And, and obviously, in certain ways, Randy Orton is absolutely fantastic. But he's not getting like, a, you know what I mean? It's like, well, he'll, you know, he's going to really have a great match with Keith Lee because he's going to, you know, whatever, whatever. It's like a, a total nothing match. You know, and it's not like it's, okay, the first one, it's like, well, they're saving it for a later one. It's like, now we've had like two of them. And they were both, or th is it, it's two, right? Or is it three? I think it's three. It's three. We okay. had the with the one with no finish, and then the pay-per-view match, and then this one. Okay. So it's three, and not one of them has been a good match. The only thing that was good is in, in, in match two, um, Keith Lee won, so people were like raving about it because they were shocked that Randy Orton would put him over, which I wasn't shocked at at all because it was the only finish that made sense. But then again, the finish that they did here made no sense at all. I guess that's what people were expecting is is like we're just expecting something that just buries the guy, and he, they didn't bury him, so it's like it's good. And it's like, well, here we are. You got your, you know, whatever whatever plus that pin on that pay per view meant. It was taken away tonight because a lot more people watch this match and watch that pay-per-view match. And in this match, it's just like, you know, he was not, he, he was not special at all. And, and it's not that hard. He can do special things. You know, you just, you just don't, he doesn't have to give the guy an RKO. You know what I mean? He doesn't have to do that. You know, I guess. Actually, we've had three Keith Lee, Randy Orton singles matches and we had the three way where Randy Orton pinned Seth. Yeah. Last week. So 